the Tricks of the Trade, the podcast series where you can learn from the best in the business. And I'm your host, Rabani from Curate. And we are an IIM alumni venture in India's first revenue tech firm, where we enable leading startups and corporations to maximize their revenue potential by building the best revenue teams. So in this series, we invite industry experts like you to share your practical tips, insights, and secrets of success. Whether you are an employee, student, or a lifelong learner, you will definitely find something valuable and interesting in every episode. So it would be great if you can start by introducing yourself, Rohan. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I uh, really appreciate you guys for inviting me and you know giving me the platform to share what I've learned along the journey. Right. So kudos to you guys. Uh, to, to give you a bit, you know, introduction about me, um, I started my sales career right after college. I, I was just 18 years when I started my corporate life. So I started with a small daily marketing company over there. Uh, we used to sell, you know, uh, magazine subscription, this and that lifestyle things in the US market. So uh, as a 18 years, 18 year old guy, uh, that small daily marketing company taught me a lot of things, you know, about the culture, about, you know, um, give me the soft skills and all, all the things required, you know, to m- right. make that communication with the other party. Uh, so that was the first company, you know, that opened the way for me in the sales world. After that, I uh, got into Barclays. At Barclays, I was selling their fintech product in the UK, Europe market. So right. it was a good time at Barclays. It was a big firm. So uh, learned a lot, earned a lot, uh, right. did a lot of crazy stuff over there. Uh, but, you know, just like everyone, COVID came and it went crashing down. Uh, so around 2021, you know, Rubani, I came across LinkedIn. I, I came on the platform and I came came across this SaaS sales uh, and uh, SaaS sales and SDR e mm. role kind of thing. And that really intrigued me, you know, that really uh, gave me like uh, eye opening, made my eye open because, you know, I, even I was in sales, but uh, this seemed really uh you know really exciting because you, right. people are earning so much it's mm-hmm. fancy and all that so i determined that if i see myself it's in an a role or you know sdr in SaaS sales yeah. so in 2021 i started my journey journey to get into SaaS sales and it was a very tough journey uh, with a lot of patience with a lot of determination a lot of sleepless night yeah. and uh uh, in the first six months, I would say I went through around like 50 interviews, all of that uh, with a lot of rejections, with a lot of, you know, uh, learnings and all. Right. After six months of uh, hard work, I got my first SaaS sales job. That was a Bangalore-based company called Moxo. Mm-hmm. And I would say in that six months, uh, it was all, I was all alone. Like I have to learn everything from LinkedIn. I, that time there wasn't much LinkedIn influencers on LinkedIn platforms. So I have to learn everything all by myself from the internet. And I did that. And uh, it is, it, it, it isn't that hard you know, right. to absorb knowledge from internet or from LinkedIn. But after a lot of effort, after six months, I got my first SaaS sales job mm-hmm. at Moxo. And after that, I would say uh, the journey has been really amazing. The journey has been filled with a lot of learnings. A lot of you know ups and downs and yeah that's it so uh, i have from t- that time till now i've been through three sales SaaS companies uh, right. right now i'm working at hiver uh, for as a senior sdr right. and yeah that's that's all about me till now right so what exactly inspired you to you know pursue a career in sales the simple answer would be the money <laughs> that's that's it you know uh, i love money and sas is filled with sas sales is filled with money so mm-hmm. where there is money there is me right and uh, what is your role in in hyper looks like like what does your day look like then your roles and responsibilities the day-to-day activities so uh, as a senior uh, bdr at hyper my job is you know a total outbound prospecting Oh yeah, I try to get uh, prospects on a demo call, on an introduction call, for them to see the product higher. And uh, how I do that is basically through cold emailing, cold calls, and a bit of LinkedIn prospecting. Right. You know, so yeah, 
through that and uh, i would say uh, cold emailing and cold calling uh, uh, it it depends you know uh, you have to personalize you have to be a bit creative because there are hundred of other people doing the same thing uh, so there is like you know uh, for one guy there's like hundred people emailing the same executive leader or the icp so you have to be a bit creative a bit um, think outside of the box then you know approach the cold emailing and cold calling and uh, yeah that's what i do i try to think outside of the box i try to be creative i try to be different from other people and that has given me results till now right so coming on to the questions as well so rohan you have been in the b2b saas industry for quite some time now right so what are some yes. of the better strategies that you have found for researching potential customers and their needs so the first thing would be you know going thoroughly through the linkedin that's one of the most important that's it's like the holy grail if yeah. you want to stay in the saas uh linkedin gives you a lot of information like if you go through their activities if you go through their likes you know it gives what they like if they like any sports activities or then you can go through the recommendation or you know and even on linkedin you can go uh, through linkedin you can see their twitter profile that's also an option so i use that a lot and on twitter you get a lot of information uh, so that's one of the thing so for researching data is very important as much as data you can you know gather about the prospect about the company it really helps you a lot but the very important thing about it is that you can't you know spend a lot of time in researching about the organization because uh, outbound is all about numbers the more number you hit uh, the more are the chances of getting your reply so you have to start uh, slow you can't you know uh like you can't be a pro from the first day so i i still remember my first day i mean i have to research 30 accounts right. and i almost took uh, my, uh the whole day for just that 30 account but right. now if you give me 30 accounts i can do it within you know uh max uh, 90 120 minutes right so yeah is- and then that comes that comes with you know experience that comes with yeah. you know Uh, repeating okay. the process again and again that uh, so it becomes like a template right so so scale with quantity uh, with quality is really important right in outbound right so understanding a customer's decision making process and stakeholders can be quite can be a crucial step mm-hmm. in the sales process right so how do you identify yeah. these factors and what strategy have you found to be effective for for your de use as well So you know, here comes the uh, phenomena like the account mapping. It's mm-hmm. really important over here because you have uh, in every organization there's a ladder. Uh, it starts with the ICs, you know, mm-hmm. who m- might be the end user of your product. Then right. comes the manager who might be handling, it, and then comes the super manager, you know, right. who might be one of the decision maker. Mm-hmm. So you you have to map the uh, account, and then if you you know connect at the very base, you have to go through. ladder wise first you have to uh, convince the ic that this might help you so from that you can get an intro to their manager and you can convince them so through that you can get the uh, intro to the higher one so the account mapping is very important and uh, being transparent you know from the start being transparent ask a uh, question up front mm-hmm. like how is your decision making process or how you you know uh, how is the evaluation process for you for you guys right and and the normal band questions you know to qualify them so those uh, can really help a lot right you have to evaluate right so in your experience as well what are some of the common mistakes sales people make during say the prospecting phase a common mistake i would say that i used to do uh, would be um, you know treating every prospect like same you know right uh, so Mm-hmm. Yeah, common mistake. So you have to change your tone. You have to change your, you know, uh, the messaging as per the roles, as per the roles, as per the the you know, persona. You have to change that. So and that there comes the research. You have to for for that to for that you uh, for that you have to research the prospect, the research the account, uh, because the messaging you have you would have sent to a you know a organization with fifty employees wouldn't work for an organization with two hundred employees. 
Right. So you have to research and then you have to adjust your messaging according to that. Right. So and how can you also of... avoid these problems as well? I'm sorry? Uh, I'm asking, how can you also, like you stated some problems, right? So how can we uh, avoid these problems as well? To avoid this problem, you know, you have to be very, uh, very uh, good with your ICP personas you know the definition of your icp the definition of your territory the tam so you have to be very good with that so whenever you look at an organization like this is a 200 employee company or the mid-market company that uh, have to sell into the operations or have to sell into the skills and development team so you will uh, that automatically generates over here the what will be the messaging so that right. comes with experience but you have to be very good with your icp persona defi definition right and communicating the value of a product or service during the prospecting phase can be very challenging, mm -hmm. right? So can you share yeah. some strategies or techniques that you have found that were effective in you know, communicating value to potential clients or customers? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as a rookie SDR, I used to do this a lot. I used to talk a lot about the feature. I used mm -hmm. to talk a lot like, uh, you know, we do this, we do that. But later I realized, and thanks to the mentors I got, uh, you know, it's not about the features, it's not about uh, what the product can do or not, but it's all about the narrative, you know, the output that the product can, you know, help the our target persona with. Mm -hmm. It's all about the narrative, like we can, you know, red, we can help you reduce the RAM time, we can help you increase your meetings rate. So it's all about that, uh, you know, if you can crack the narrative and are able to explain that narrative to, to your prospect on a cold call and it's a it's a score right and can you also walk us through any of your you know personal target breakdown process that you have when it comes to identifying and pursuing potential customers so uh, so basically whenever i get I get an account you know right. what i do i first start with uh a cold email approach a cold email so what mm -hmm. i do first i go to the higher ups this the, the decision maker first mm -hmm. so i uh, research about them i give some time you know about researching them i'm researching about what problems they could face uh, go through their linkedin uh, profile and all and then mm -hmm. i come with a good personalized cold email you know mm -hmm. uh, putting the problem statement then putting a, a relevant solution that we might be able to help you with and ask a uh, soft soft CTA that uh, you know uh, w would you be at, at least in be interested at seeing mm -hmm. this so that's the first thing a cold email and i try to do this at least you know for 25 to 30 accounts right Tw 25 to 30 uh, like people in a right. day so that's uh -huh. the target uh, as much as you can do that's uh, good good and after that uh, and it can't be done at once you know you have to break down you have to schedule your year you have to schedule your day you have to break down your task in you know multiple mm -hmm. uh, blocks after doing some cold emails i go to uh, cold calling and i try to cold call you know early morning uh, between 8 9 10 that time try to make few cold calls try to get some connect after that uh, i take some break then you know go um, come back and do some linkedin prospecting or you know low, Go through just through my feed try to learn about what's going on in the sales world right now right you know so that's it and after coming uh, after that i do my rest of the cold emails then cold calling that's it so two blocks of cold emails two blocks of cold calling and between linkedin prospecting right so uh, can you also uh, let us know like building trust with potential customers during the qualification phase can be crucial in closing a deal so what strategies again that you have found effective in building trust with potential customers i would say um, it really depends you know uh, you have to be transparent from the start right uh, let it be you know if the customer ask about the pricing on the first call you have to give what it is you can't you know you can't see like uh, this is our very first call or we can't we don't want to discuss you know pricing on the first call right don't do that that really you know uh, put a put a um, suspicion in the mind of the customer right so you always transparent you know uh, try to build a you know a relationship like a consultative relation where you know um, 
you don't uh, feel like I'm, I'm trying to just sell my product, but feel like I'm trying to help the customer, whether it might be through my product or whether it might be, you know, uh, through some other product, but uh, I'll do what's right for the customer. Right. I'll try to help them. But, uh, you know, that's that's all about building a relationship. That's really important in the uh, evaluation process or in the sales cycle uh, with your champion, with the decision maker. So that, that's building the trust. Right. So data can also be a valuable tool for, say, salespeople to better understand their customers and tailor their sales approach. Right. So how do you use this data in your sales processes as well? Uh, data is very crucial you know as i told you uh mm, the researching part for an sdr bdr the research is the very important thing because you know it it starts the funnel when you do the research then you can you uh, send the cold email then you can you know get the reply so okay. researching is the process that st really starts the sales funnel and for research you know there, there are a lot of tools like linkedin there are tools twitter uh, tools like Apollo, Zoom Info, that gives you a lot of data. But right. what what is really important, you know, uh, to gather that data and to build a, a kind of story that you can, you know, show, showcase the customer that, you know, we know about you. Right. We know your challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a product that can help you with that challenge. So right. would you be interested, you know, to evaluating it? So that's really important to build a use case, to build a business case about uh, the challenges that we can help you with. So data is really important right. and you can get it from a lot of tools. LinkedIn is the my favorite and then Twitter. Right. So yeah, that's, that's all about data. Right. So speaking about tools as well, do you have any favorite tools that you also use in your day-to-day -day activities as well? So CRM, CRM should be everyone's favorite tool. CRM <laughs> helps a lot. You know, because CRM gives you a clear visibility on what's happening, what's not happening, and what's not right. working for you. So right. you have to make CRM your friend. Right. And, and I believe I spend most of my time on CRM, going through accounts, going through, right. you know, seeing what's happening on the account. Right. So, yeah. So, so, so uh, again, uh, coming back to you, you've used LinkedIn and Twitter as well, right? So how do you think yes. social media can be a powerful tool, say, for prospecting and sales? So, in my case, uh, Rwani, uh, for me, yeah. LinkedIn and Twitter has worked a lot. Right. Um, I remember because of Twitter, I got some intel about a prospect. Right. And that landed me by one of the um, one of my previous job. Right. So, Twitter is really really important, and LinkedIn. So, my two favorites are. LinkedIn and Twitter. Apart from that, you know, if you need any contact details, there are tools like Slinter, Lucia, Zoom right. Info. You can get that, get those information from there. But to research about prospect, LinkedIn mm -hmm. and Twitter. That's it. Right. So what is I haven't used. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Please. So uh, there, there are other tools as well. Like you know, people also use Instagram. People also use Facebook. But I haven't tried that much, so I can't say about it. But for me, it's it's always been Twitter and LinkedIn. Right. So some, what are some of the strategies that you're using on, on these websites as well while you're prospecting? Just to gather some interesting fact about the prospect, All like, right. you know, what I try to do. Uh, so in cold email, you know, you have first you have to start with a personalized, personalized line, like you have to show the prospect that you have research about it. Then, you know, you can go to the business case. Uh, so to research about that personalized uh, thing, you have to get some interesting fact. It may be, you know, um, the sports that the prospect might like, the car the prospect might have. So, you know, you have to relate, uh, you have to tell about some interesting fact about that and then, you know, uh, link it to the use case and then develop a story to showcase it to, to make it interesting, you know, just to be creative. So following up with potential customers and maintaining relationships with existing customers is important, right? So what are some of the strategies that you have found that were effective to maintain these relationships? As a pre-sales, you know, um, I've been in sales, like I'm not a post-sales guy. Right. So 
I might not be the right person, you know, to tell about it, but I would say uh, nurturing them, you know, just be in touch with them uh, by you know, keeping up with them, like, how's it going for you or how's it, you know, how's it working for you and try to solve their issue as soon as possible. That helps in maintaining the relationship, even after the seal is done. And that is that is the part of the CSM team, I feel. Uh, and uh, there can be also be some misconceptions about sales and selling that can hinder the sales process, right? So in your experience, what are some of the most common misconceptions about sales and how can sales professionals overcome that? So the miscon misconception, I would say, you know, uh, too much personalization is a uh, is not good. Too much personalization is not good. So uh, there's a you know there's a you have to be balanced. You have to keep a balance between personalization and relevancy. In some cases, even if you have less personalization but more relevancy, it works. But if you do too much personalization but the relevancy just falls away, that's that's not going to work because you can write a you know a poetry about the prospect, but if your solution is not relevant to the customer it won't uh, lead to anything or anywhere right. so i would say relevancy is more important than personalization right right so that was the last question from my and rohan that it was really insightful thank you so much for joining us hope you had a great time yep yeah, uh, really thank you so much for inviting me again uh, rubani i right. hope this video helps people uh, who right. are new to sales and i would just say anyone who need help in sales let me know i've been helping people to get into the sales industry and i would love to do that more so right. thanks a lot thank you thank you so much for your time have a great day appreciate it. Bye. you too Ravani. take care bye